Hey, I'm Alec and today I'm going to show you how to post-process metal infused filaments. Metal infused filaments are a unique subset of 3D printing materials. And we've gone over them before in our how to succeed with metal infused filaments video. And I just want to reiterate that they are not something that you're going to do anything structural with. They're pretty much only for ornamental purposes. And the thing with these different materials is while you could sand them and sit around and spend a lot of time using some elbow grease to get these polished, you can actually use something like a rock tumbler to make the process go a lot easier and a lot less attention on them. So let's go into what different materials work best in a tumbler and what you actually have to do. If you're going to use a rock tumbler, it's best used only for metal infused filaments, whether it's brass, bronze, copper, or any other metal infused filament. That's what you're going to want to use with the rock tumbler. It wouldn't work too well with PLA or ABS just because it's just a little too gentle over time, whereas with those it's a lot easier just to go at it with sandpaper. Before you actually start tumbling your prints, you're going to want to make sure that you clean them up. You don't want to leave any sort of zits or blobbing or any minor layer issues where there's maybe a small shift or a, an extra seam that you have on there. Make sure to either just take an X-Acto knife and trim them off or flush cutters because while the rock tumbler will wear away most of those details, it may not get them as much as you'd like it to, which is why just a hand tool will make it go a little bit better. So finding a rock tumbler isn't that difficult. In fact, you can usually find it at a budget hardware store and we've used ours for a couple years now and only had one part break and that was a belt and that only cost us about $3 and a quick trip to the store to get that replaced. So just something simple and you want to take into consideration how big the actual tumbling mechanism is. In our case, we have a barrel tumbler, which means that it's about three liters in size and this small fill, even though this is our standard size, it's just a little too big for that. While it will fit in there standing upright, it doesn't have enough room to really roll around. So you don't get all of the surfaces equally worn. So you may want to consider printing things smaller to fit your container or just get a bigger container in the first place and then be able to print in the size you want to. Once you have the rock tumbler, there are the consumable side of things like grit and media. So media are small plastic or ceramic pellets that you can add into the tumbler to help fill the voids and actually have something to help grind up against your parts to wear them down and smooth them out. And you can get these in different sizes from small, medium, or large, just depending on how big the part is or the sort of detail you have. In our case, we have a lot of small pellets just because of all the details in a 3D, 3D print that you want to be able to actually polish. And then for grits, those usually come in a kit where they're titled step one, step two, step three, and four in terms of what grit is in each of them and how you should apply them. Once you have your supplies and you've cleaned up your print, you're ready to start loading the rock tumbler. So if you have the barrel kind, what you want to do is load up your 3D print into it first and then add the media to help fill in the voids. That way you don't have just a lot of dead weight thrashing around in there. Then once you've done that, you're going to take your grit and you're going to start with step one. Take two tablespoons per third of the container full. So if you have a full container, you'll need six tablespoons of grit. And then add a little bit of water, just enough to cover to the top of either the 3D prints or the media, just depending on where it feels the fullest. And then once you have that, close it up, seal it tight, make sure that there's no grit between the seams so that it's going to leak over time, and put it on the rock tumbler. And from that point, you're just going to leave it for a whole week. Yes, one full week. After a full week has passed, you're going to be able to take out your part, inspect it, and see if it needs to go for another pass in there. So usually in the first pass is where you're going to see that there's still a lot of major layer lines, and if there are, you're going to want to put it in for another week with step one. Because once you go to a next step, it isn't going to be as aggressive as the previous, which means that any sort of really egregious details or sort of issues that you want cleared out are still going to be there. So just make sure that before you move to the next step, your print is as clean as you want it. So once you've decided whether or not you're going to stick with one step or move on to the next, you're going to need to clean out the barrel and your part and all the media that's in it. So like I said before, the grit is a consumable, so you are just going to throw it away when you're done with this. And what you're going to do is just take your barrel to either the sink and make sure you have a, a bucket and a colander, or go to the hose outside and make a colander. I used some red solo cups that I just stabbed some holes in the bottom of just so I had something to catch the media, catch the print, and then just rinse out all of the grit into a, into a bucket or just the ground. And then from there, you're just gonna wanna make sure that 
your print, your media, and your barrel are all completely clean because any grit that's in there into the next step is gonna leave deep scratches in your parts just because they're a harder grit and a thicker grit than what's actually going to be in there and it's gonna be a lot more apparent. Once you have your barrel, your print, and your media cleaned out, go ahead and add them all back together and do the same thing we did on the last step. So instead of adding step one grit, add step two and then leave it for a week. Do it again and then add step three grit. Do it again, add step four grit. So you're gonna do this and it's gonna take some time to get your part to be completely polished, but this is what you have to do to get your part to look really good. Step five is actually the easiest step because once you've cleaned out the barrel, all you have to do is add a little water, a little soap, put your part in there and leave it for a couple hours overnight Really, the longer you can leave it, the better, because all this is gonna do is really help clean up all of the grit that may be left on your part, and it will polish it so much more than if you had just done the end of step four and called it. Once you've polished your print with soap and water, the next step is either call it quits and say this looks great, I'm happy with it, or you can go the step of weathering your pieces or adding a patina to it. So if you have like bronze fill, bronze, patinas, copper patinas, just like the Statue of Liberty is green, even though copper is kind of an orangey metal color. So what you can do is just either leave it out, get special weathering compounds that you can add on top of it. In this case of these two different bronze filled fills, um, the, the open air and a little bit of washing that we've been doing to help clean them up has started to add a slight green tint to them. You can see in the logo around the corners of his visor he's starting to turn just a little green, which adds a nice effect to it in showing that it's not just a, a simple print. There is some active weathering going on to this and the bronze is interacting with the air. Now, if you have an iron-filled print, there is one extra thing you can do with it. You can actually rust it. So because there's actual iron particles in there, those will react to water and different factors that will actually make it rust. So you can go the full mile and make it look Mad Max apocalyptic or turn it down a bit and just make it look like something that's been left out a little bit. Give it just a little bit of character, but not enough to make it look like the end of the world. So for the actual rusting part of it, there isn't an exact science to it. It's really just eyeballing a lot of the measurements. What I kind of went with was I just took a plastic cup, added about three quarters of a cup of water, an eighth of a cup of vinegar, an eighth of hydrogen peroxide, and two or three tablespoons of table salt. And so those will all interact enough to really bite into the iron and start rusting it. And from that point, you can leave it for as little or as long as you want. It just depends on the look you're going for. So we did a couple where one was left at 12 hours, one was left at 24, 48, and then we checked on them from there. And you might need to weigh them down with something. We just use some heat sinks, and that's just because the prints have infill, which means they are gonna float. And that's it. There's been a lot of time that you've spent in order to make your print look a lot better and elevate the metal infused filament to the next level. So take your polished, weathered, or rusted 3D print of metal infused filament and display it proudly because you've spent a lot of time and energy on it, and it looks great. Now we'd love to see what different works of art you can create using metal infused filaments, so feel free to send those to us. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.